Welcome back. This is David Wiss, dietitian, the Los Angeles District, California Dietetic Association. We've been discussing research and grants over several months, hoping to get dietitians interested in the topic of doing research. Last segment, we talked about survey studies and about tool validation. Today, we're going to talk about inclusion and exclusion criteria, as well as prospective and retrospective studies. Inclusion criteria is self-explanatory. These are characteristics that subjects must have in order to qualify for the study. Exclusion criteria is characteristics that disqualify the subjects. Certain factors can be things like age, sex, race, ethnicity, type or stage of disease, previous treatments, uh, presence or absence of medical, psychosocial, emotional conditions. Uh, I'll give you an example. A binge eating disorder study. The inclusion criteria might be males ages 18 and over with a history of substance abuse. The exclusion criteria could be the presence of any other psychiatric diagnoses. One other example could be an exercise intervention for type 2 diabetes. The inclusion criteria could again be ages 18 and up, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes within the last year, and a BMI under 40. The exclusion criteria could be no diabetes medication for the last year and then a BMI of over 40. So it very much specifies the subjects who can be in and who can be out. A prospective study will follow a cohort or a group of subjects into the future and watch for outcomes. This is commonly used in epidemiological research. Clinical trials that are randomized are also considered prospective and this will provide evidence about cause and effect. It takes as long as the intervention requires, but these type of studies are very timely, very difficult, and oftentimes very expensive. A retrospective study will take a look back. It'll look at events that have occurred previously. It'll use information that's already been collected, for example, in a medical database. It takes only as long as the data analysis. However, it does not establish cause and effect but it can highlight some very important correlations. An example of a retrospective study. Suppose we had a group of 100 adults enrolled in a weight management program. By taking a look at their medical records, we can determine the prevalence of type 2 diabetes in this group. This type of data will not determine if obesity causes type 2 diabetes or vice versa, but it will help to determine a correlation between the two. We've talked about a very basic understanding of research and my hope is that more dietitians will continue to increase their knowledge base about research so when reading uh, journal articles we can read it with a knowledgeable eye and be able to draw some of our own conclusions about the study and not have to rely on secondary sources so if you haven't gotten involved in research or you want to learn more about research please contact one of us from LAD and we'll be here to help you Thanks for tuning in. It's David Wiss and I'm signing out.